right, so I just finished uh, working on my quick start by uh, Thermal uh, Technologies. Uh, this is an expensive little hard start kit for uh, testing uh, little compressors. Uh, you can actually do a full size compressor. The problem with this one here uh, was the switch was defective. Uh, it starts out with off, which is what we got right there, you can see. Then you've got run and then start, which puts the start uh, puts the capacitor in the circuit. You let it off, it continues to run, shut it off. So you've got a 30 amp fuse in here. The way this thing's wired up, if you have a male plug here on the end, uh, it comes down, uh, obviously, the cord comes into here. One leg goes to the fuse, which is right here, which I just had to put a new end on it because I had to replace the switch. The switch is what was defective. The switch they had in there had gotten burnt up. You can see the pitting down there on the uh, contact points. And the way this switch is, it's a little different. You can usually find on, off, on, off, on, off, but generally cannot find off, on, momentary. So it's a lot harder to get. I was able to find the replacement one, one that was actually rated for 250 volts, uh, 10 amps at that, and 15 amps on uh, 120 volt. And uh, what you've got here is you've got leads on the end, just like my Annie does. And they're all different colors, obviously. It's the same thing. And the way you wire this thing up is pretty simplistic. These are kind of outrageous, uh, if you can even find them. They're very, very expensive for what you're getting. They're like $150, $160 for this stupid thing. Um, there's the catalog number. Uh, you can see that black is run, red is start, green is capacitor, yellow is capacitor. Well, you've got red and green coming in just wire nutted. This is so primitive. I thought this was somebody had uh, done some work on it because uh, I bought this used. Basically, what I did is, I, like I said, I went through, I resoldered this, uh, had to drill it out a little bit so that uh, we could get the wires through there and um, just went ahead and uh, did her up. I've got a Heiko soldering iron there, which, uh, you know, don't need nothing quite that expensive. And then I double-checked my continuity and which way the switches was working there with the uh, meter. And then just a little bit of solder there. But uh, this is uh, the little start uh, cord that uh, I'm going to start using. Uh, this allows you to use any capacitor you want. Annie has it built right in there. This one doesn't. You can either use it without the uh, start capacitor or with one. Uh, like I said, it had um, a, a different type of connector on the end. I had to trim it up when I ended up uh, cutting the cord to get that in there because it uh, was originally uh, soldered in there like that. And uh, I figured it'd just be easier to chop it off and then just redo it. Well, when I did that, I ended up having to uh, restrip this, which then made it too long for this. So it is grounded to the chassis. We got to finish screwing that down here real quick. So we've got it there. As you can tell, I went ahead and used a uh, insulated crimp connector. I took the plastic off the end of it. It was a blue one. You can see the blue there. I had a yellow, but that was too big. It wouldn't fit into that pattern there. And then just in case they didn't hold, I went ahead and, and put some solder on the end there. Yeah, that's about it, guys. There really ain't nothing to this thing. The way this is, though, you've got obviously off is off. Then you have on, which is connecting to the uh, black here that looks like it's blue. And then when you go to momentary, it goes to the yellow while this one here stays on. So off, these two on, momentary here, off, run, start. Simple as that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and test this thing out here. I've got it turned off right now. I've got it clamped on the white, which in reality, it's really their neutral, but they're calling it their they're common. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hook it up to the capacitor, which we've got here. So we've got the two terminals there. We used the resistance check to make sure which one was our common start and run. Start is usually your higher resistance, and that is red with this particular device. you got to check your own device to make sure it's accurate. And then the run is the black, which you would think red would be run, but that ain't how they did it. And I would think black is common, but hey, whatever. So we've got it hooked up here to the amp meter. We're going to flip it all the way to It kicked on, unhooked it, and she's pulling 7 amps. So 
Uh, today we were back to replace this start um, relay and capacitor, which we found bad the other day. And it uh, looks like my device works. I'm not getting shocked. And it's running. So kill it. Now I'm kind of curious because the one that, I, that we've seen uh, out there, there's one out there that doesn't have a capacitor in the circuit, which all you're doing is putting it in series with your start. So what you could do is just wire these two together, and we could see if it'll start, but we'll have to give it a moment here to equalize back out before we do it. It may start generally when the start relay goes bad or the capacitor goes bad. It's an open circuit, so it's putting nothing to the start. Um, so all we're doing is phase shift when we're putting a capacitor in there anyhow to get that ball rolling. And uh, so let's go ahead and discharge this capacitor, which you're not supposed to short it. You're supposed to actually use a resistor. Obviously don't touch any of the live terminals because you'll get the crap shocked out of you. Uh, because it will damage the capacitor. These are different than a run capacitor. Start capacitors are supposed to be discharged with a resistor. Alright, so we've got this isolated here. These are live potentially. We've got everything back off. We're going to try to start it here without a capacitor. See what happens. It did start. It's pulling crazy high amperage. So not a good idea. We went ahead and killed it. But yeah, it's just easier to have one that actually puts the start uh, capacitor in the circuit. There's no magic to it. Uh, I didn't wait super long for this compressor to equalize. I mean, you know, maybe 45 seconds to a minute. Yeah, you should wait four or five minutes, but we don't have that kind of time for demonstrations. So if I was to hook up that capacitor again, it would probably kick right on no problem, which is the whole reason why you have a capacitor. We got it back in the circuit, kicked right on, amperage dropped back down to seven. We're good to go. Everything's working. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in. If you would, please hit the like button on your way out. Consider subscribing. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. So... That's the end of this demonstration. We will catch you guys on the next one. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this demonstration, thanks for watching. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a big like, and let's catch you on the next one. All right, guys, thanks for tuning All right, guys, that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in. If you would, please hit the like button on your way out. Consider subscribing. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. So to make things look a little nicer, I ended up just putting in some split loom to make it a little uh, easier to keep uh, track of these wires. Um, what we've done is we went ahead and plugged it into the wall. We've got it turned off right now. We're plugged in there to the outlet. So when you come over to it right now, everything is dead. So when you turn it on, your black is your hot. Everything else is dead. When you push the button here, that sends power to the capacitor, which loops in and out over to your red, which brings it over here to the red. There you go. And then the white technically is your neutral. Think of it as it could be 230 volt, it could be 120 volt, whichever one you want. Either way, you're switching one leg, you're putting constant power to your common, you're putting constant power the other leg to your run, and your start leg is getting your momentary switch, which is going through the capacitor and breaking once it comes up to a speed, which is purely you giving it the start. So simple as that, guys. Um, that switch is really hard to find. I had to do a lot of research to find it. Um, that's not a normal switch, like I said, but for the most part, this is pretty, pretty simple. Um, like I said, these are really ridiculously priced. You can buy these Mueller plugs here on eBay. I believe you might even be able to find them in uh, Amazon. This is really nothing more than a handy box, but it was custom built, obviously, by them. So it was even cheaper yet with a 30 amp fuse in there. So, I mean, you are protected, um, and it is, uh, it's pretty neat and handy. I think it's going to be kind of easier and smaller than what the Annie was. But like I said, it's just a short start cord and it allows you to put a capacitor. If you don't need a capacitor, you can tie them together. If you do need the capacitor, you put one leg on uh, each side of the capacitor and you're good to go. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one.